All right. So we've just reviewed the chapters of this Himalayan Tibetan orogeny. And now let's wrap up by trying to tackle these questions. So when we wonder about why there are faults in one region or why there's different earthquakes, it can all be taken into account through that story, which we just talked about. And understanding those chapters helps us not only to see the landscape, but then see down underneath. And so taking this diagram to a bit more simple, right? We can look at the different fault systems that are in Bhutan and across the Himalaya. First, starting with the South Tibetan Detachment System, or STDS. Next, coming into this main central thrust, cutting across Bhutan and having this large spur in the eastern area. Next, coming this main boundary thrust, which actually acts as the um, terminus of the mountains in the east, but is then also uh, flanked and preceded by our main frontal thrust. Now, what's important to note is that especially these last three thrust faults, these aren't just lines on the map, but these are faults that cut down into the Earth's crust through the immense amount of pressure that was used to build them. And these faults are actually interrelated. You can see that they all congregate down onto this main detachment system. And this system is called the main Himalayan thrust. And to understand earthquakes, we really have to look at what is moving along the main Himalayan thrust. So, to break that down even further, remember that these plates are undergoing tremendous pressure, tremendous compression, and they are still colliding. However, these faults that we see have developed over different times, right? With, um, our faults to the north being older and our faults to the south being younger. As the tectonic forces have continuously pushed these continents together, the location of that force has shifted southwards in the sense that these faults up front are the ones that are now releasing the main amount of force. This means that today, these older faults in the north are actually inactive. They, are, uh, they have remnants in it and they show the displacement of the crust. But our main movement is happening along these faults right here and where they meet to the main Himalayan thrust below. So our main frontal thrust and our main boundary thrust are key to understanding our earthquake distributions. And to take this one step further, remember that for earthquakes, when we have this offset, we, can, we map where the epicenter is, right? Where the earthquake happens on the surface, where it comes out. But the actual rupture of the earthquake is often, usually, it's within the fault system. It's down below. And so this surface expression um, is actually an expression of where the fault is moving deep within the Earth's crust. And so that means when we look at something like Bhutan, when we see faults on the surface, we really have to think of where they are happening, where is their hypocenter happening down below, which all comes to this main Himalayan thrust system. So let's take a look. When we're happening here in Bhutan, remember that all of these, these, these earthquakes that we're seeing, right? They're not just happening on the surface, but they're happening deep beneath the surface. And so we need to look at research that goes beneath the surface to understand what is going on. So if we were to look at Bhutan and actually distributions of the earthquakes across the Himalaya, we can see that there are some interesting patterns particularly around Bhutan, we have this series of earthquakes that extends south of the Himalaya. And so if we take a closer zoom in on that, 
we notice that something has to be happening right here. And we also, again, have a series of earthquakes in the east with a gap that seems somewhere in the middle. And so let's look at how the faults relate to these earthquakes. One important part about our earthquakes is measuring how deep do they happen in the Earth's system. If we look towards the east, where you had mapped out your uh, earthquakes before, we can see that these earthquakes are relatively shallow. They're around less than 20 kilometers deep. However, towards the west, these earthquakes are much deeper, greater than 20 kilometers, going down into the Indian basement. And you can see, because they're making of this linear pattern right here, this is actually a different kind of fault moving along the system. If we were to take this map and turn it in on cross-section, this researcher by Deal and others in 2017 really shows how these earthquakes are, are different. We can see that in eastern Bhutan, we have many earthquakes that are associated along this main frontal thrust that are uh, going into this main Himalayan thrust that are shallow. So in the east of Bhutan, we have an active main Himalayan thrust producing many earthquakes towards the center of the country. Whereas in the west of Bhutan, this main Himalayan thrust is rather locked and it doesn't seem to be moving. So those uh, offsets, those displacements, um, aren't as active. What we have, though, is this system of deeper earthquakes that's going on beneath the Himalayan surface, and deformation of this basement. So again, potentially a complex graph, but look at those differences in colors and differences uh, in depths. Right there. So there we have it. When trying to answer these questions about earthquakes, remember, we got to think about the local tectonic forces, the geologic history, and then our current distribution of where these faults are interacting. So I invite you, now with all of this knowledge, to pick one of these questions and see if you can write a short reflection using some of the information that we've just talked about. We'll continue to build on this knowledge throughout the remainder of this course. Thank you and good luck.